Hello, I hope you are okay wherever you are watching me from. Welcome to lesson number 41. In our previous lesson, that is number 40, we were looking at the terminologies that are used in this topic known as ecology. And in this, uh, in this one, we are going to look at the factors that are found in an ecosystem. And I'm going to start by defining the term ecosystem. I said that ecosystem is a unit comprising of both living and non-living factors whose interaction leads to self-sustaining a system. These non-living factors are referred to as the abiotic factors, while the living factors are referred to as the biotic factors. Examples of non-living factors, I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to explain how they affect lives of different organisms within an ecosystem. The first abiotic factor is light. Here I'm referring to sunlight, which is the naturally occurring light. Light is the main source of energy in an ecosystem. It is absorbed by the plants in, uh, to make their own food in the process of photosynthesis. The same light can still affect uh, the lives of different organisms within an ecosystem. And remember, the plants which, uh, which absorb this light to make their own food are also depended upon by the animals uh, because the animals feed on them so as to acquire energy uh, from the same. Light also affects the lives of organisms such as the wild carnivorous animals such as lions and hyenas since they are not adapted to see clearly in very brightly in very uh, bright days they tend to hunt their prey uh, in a dim light that is uh, basically very early in the morning or late in the evening because they are adapted to see clearly in a dim light there are some other organisms such as the moth which are also affected by the light positively they tend to move where there is a bright light especially during the night and uh, that is also an effect that is seen uh, which is caused by this abiotic factor known as light penetration of light in water is measured using uh, a certain instrument which is referred to as the Seeky disc and uh, the light intensity is measured using the photographic light meter. Let me go to the second abiotic factor that is temperature. Temperature uh, affects all the enzyme controlled biochemical reactions which take place in the body of living organisms. Therefore, these organisms tend to move to where there is a, a favorable temperature which cannot denature the cells which are found in them which cannot denature the enzymes which are found in their bodies and uh, which cannot uh, kill them to be precise this uh, distribution is uh, seen very well in organisms such as the earthworm which uh, tend to burrow deeply into the mud when the temperature rises above the required and when the temperature has um, declined uh, that is when the temperature becomes a bit lower most of the earthworms are seen coming close to the surface because they are actually uh, attracted uh, they are actually attracted to a very low uh, temperature when the temperature is so high uh, when the temperature is very low the enzymes which are found inside the body of an organism becomes inactive, hence reduction in the biochemical reactions. When the temperature increases to the optimum, it leads to an increase in the rate of enzyme control reaction. When it increases above the optimum, when I talk of optimum, I'm referring to the maximum temporal range which can enable the process of uh, the biochemical process to take place. When the temperature increases above the optimum, the, temp uh, the rate of reaction reduces because the enzymes are denatured, or you can say they are killed. 
let me move to the third uh, abiotic factor that is wind wind ref uh, wind refers to moving air this uh, wind is also is capable of carrying small flying insects such as the butterfly from one point to the other and that may make them to change their habitat from time to time wind also uh, affect uh, the lives of hyenas uh, being an example of carnivorous animals whereby these hyenas are adapted to hunt their uh, they are adapted to hunt their prey uh, due to movement in a counter current direction with the wind that is if the wind is blowing from east the hyenas may tend to move towards the same direction so that they are able to feel the smell of a prey when it is still very far away wind still as an abiotic factor may uh, be affecting the uh, lives of plants positively because they act as agents of pollination and they also act of as agent of dispersal when the seed matures and the plant it may be dispersed to other places by wind so that they can germinate the same wind may also be having some negative effect to some of the plant because they may end up breaking the stems of some plant and uh, th that is how the wind affect the lives of organisms in an ecosystem let me move to the fourth by a biotic factor that is humidity humidity refers to the concentration of water vapor within the atmosphere when there is a high humidity then it means that there is too much water vapor within the atmosphere high humidity may affect the rate of uh, uh, photosynthesis because it may end up absorbing some some uh, light hence reducing the light intensity which lands onto the surface of the leaf and as a result it lowers the rate of uh, photosynthesis humidity may also uh, lower the rate of transpiration when there is a high humidity there is a lower rate of transpiration because there is uh, too much water within the atmospheric space in form of vapor hence more water may not come out of the plant and we say that it has reduced the rate of transpiration when there is too much humidity in the atmosphere it may lead to formation of fog this fog may uh, as a simple uh, a small intensity of the fog may be referred to as uh, uh, mist when there is too much mist we call it the fog when there is too much fog within the environment it may interfere with the vision of an organism they may be having an impaired vision because they can't see uh, the items and objects uh, clearly let me move to number five that is uh, the atmospheric pressure the atmospheric pressure refers to uh, the pressure that is exerted onto the surface of the earth by a layer of gases which are found within the atmospheric space low altitude areas that is on the lowlands we have a, a high atmospheric pressure while on the high altitude areas such as the mountain tops we have the low atmospheric pressure in this low atmospheric pressure regions there are so many plants which occupy the space that is the both plants and animals generally the living organisms this is because there is plenty of oxygen which support life and also the plants are occupying this uh, region in a very uh, large number because uh, the rate of transpiration is actually lower but in high altitude areas the rate of transpiration is a bit higher because the atmospheric pressure is very low hence the area may comprise of a reduced number of organisms basically reduced number of plants because uh, they depend upon uh, having enough water in their tissues 
so as to reduce our rate of a transpiration. Let me move to the sixth abiotic factor, that is uh, pH. pH refers to concentration of hydrogen ions. Uh, it may also refer to as potential of hydrogen. When there is a high pH within a certain region or within a certain solution, then we say that it is basic. While when the pH is lower, we say that it is acidic. There are some organisms which can survive better in environments with very low pH, that is in acidic environments, while there are some which can survive better in basic environments, that is environments with very high pH. Let me talk about the last one, that is salinity. That is the last one, let me just refer to my chart once again, that is salinity. Salinity refers to the concentration of salt in a solution. And this one is much more, uh, this one becomes much more relevant when we are referring to aquatic habitat. That is a habitat which comprises of basically water or maybe much more water in that kind of uh, habitat. When there is two high salinity within an environment in this case let me talk about the aquatic environment when an aquatic environment is uh, having too much uh, salt concentration that is a very high salinity it may end up supporting life of a very few organisms because the biggest problem that organisms may be facing here is osmoregulation when I talk about osmoregulation, I'm referring to control of salt water balance. Since there is too much, water, uh, too much salt within this environment, there is, uh, it becomes very difficult for these organisms to absorb water into their tissues because the concentration of the external environment is high, I mean higher, than the concentration of solutions which are found in their bodies or which are found in their cells or which are found in their sub uh, into their uh, protoplasm or you can call it the uh, cytoplasm this may make these organisms to die because they will lose a lot of water into the external environment um, because their concentration is a bit lower and therefore there are a, there is a smaller number of organisms which can survive very well in a saline environment that is in an environment with too much salt and uh, there are just uh, there is a big number which cannot survive in such kind of saline environment but they tend to survive in areas with less salt concentration with lower salinity the uh, concentration of salts can be identi uh, can be calculated by identifying the uh, by getting the number of uh, the amount of uh, solution and the salt concentration can be calculated use uh, by identifying the percentage salt concentration per unit volume of a certain liquid be it water or whichever other liquid and when I talk of salinity, remember that there are some areas also, maybe terrestrial habitats, which may also com be comprising of a higher salt uh, concentration than uh, the others. And therefore, there are only a few varieties of plants which can grow in such kind of environment. That marks the end of our lesson number 41. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. We'll meet in our lesson number 42, whereby I'll be talking about the biotic factors. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe. Thank you.